Hi, Derek here. Um, thanks for looking at this uh, video and welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, somebody asked me how to get rid of something in Photoshop. Um, and if you have a look at this picture here, it's Rosalind Church. It's an uh, ancient church and we have this horrible modern sign right at the entrance to it. It probably is in lots of photos that it shouldn't be. So, how can we get rid of it in Photoshop? Well, once you've done your adjustments in Camera Raw, open your image into Photoshop proper. And for this demonstration, I'm going to use Clone Stamp. There are other tools there that will remove items or let you mask items or hide items. This is quite straightforward um, and it's probably the easiest. So now another thing is I've got a Wacom pen and tablet so I might confuse you by saying put your pen down or your, it's, it's a pen I, and tablet I use as opposed to a mouse when I'm using Photoshop. But I'll try, I'll try and bear it in mind. So when you, when you select the clone stamp tool, two options, you want to take the top one and the settings for your tool should be, if you come along this top line here, you want the blend mode to be, for your brush to be set at normal, you want the opacity to be 100%, you want the flow to be 100% and this here can be set at all layers or current and below. We're only going to be working with two layers so current and below would be fine. I'll leave it set to all layers. So the image is up to a, a big size. I want it. If we take right in there. Now we're 200% we're um, you, you'll never ever be that close into your, your photo. If you printed this out you would never go that close into it. You might never print it out but that, that so you're fairly zoomed in um, and, and as you can see it's a, a sign, it's got three legs, two of them are on gravel, one's bordering the curb. So so we need to try and find out how to get rid of that. We have a, a, a shaped brick here, um, we have some horizontals and then we have the actual green board that we, we want rid of. So my method, use the clone stamp tool um, and do this on an empty layer and you'll be able to go back and refer to it when you're finished. So zoom right in. Let's zoom out a little bit to start with. Clone stamp works in um, pretty much exactly the same as a copy and paste. Now straight off the bat I'm going to tell you how you make the brush bigger and smaller. If you're on a PC, the keyboard up beside the letter P just to the right of them you have your square brackets. The left bracket makes the, the brush smaller and the right bracket makes it bigger. So if you see my brush getting larger or smaller, that's what I'm doing, I'm, I'm using these. Um, if you're on a Mac, when I say you press the Alt key, on the Mac it's the Option key. Um, so the way that this tool works, it's basically it's a copy and paste. You select an area and that's you copying it and you'll paste it in somewhere else. It's a direct copy and paste. Now if we hold the Alt key down, option on the Mac, touch the, the pen to the tablet, that's me made a copy. And if I leave the Alt, lift the mouse again and let the Alt key go, I can paint, wherever I paint now, that's effectively me painting what I've just copied. And this tool is quite good. I'll make the brush really big. It gives you a preview of, of what you've just copied. So if I make it small again, so I've just, I'm copying from here and if I want to paint here, so copy and paste, so it's just, if you see the, the mouse and if you look above the mouse back to where I took my sample from, that's exactly what I'm painting in down here and I can go as much or as little as I, as I want. Now to undo that and a movement, just hit the control and while holding that down, tap the Z key that'll undo it. If you've got more than one step to go back, hold Control and Alt key together and then tap the Z key and you can go back more than one stage at a time. So, and the second thing I'll point out is when you're using the clone stamp tool, it's very accurate and you have to be aware of shadows. Uh, this 
image here, you can see there's shadow on the wall there and lightness next to it. You can see there's shadow in this area here and lightness next to it. And if I want to copy or sample to fix a bit of gravel here, and I take a sample from in here, well, you can see there's a difference in the, the gravel colour. So if I sample from here, copy, and paste down there, you see how dark the gravel is. So if I was trying to repair a little bit of gravel here, you see it doesn't look right because of the, the shade of the, the, the kind of dirt there. So when you're taking your samples, take your source sample close to where you're going to paint it. So for this here, I'm going to take a small brush. I'm going to take a sample just from about here. And another thing to do, or keep in mind to do, if you've got straight lines going through where you're going to sample, that's the place to take it. Take your sample right smack bang in the middle of the straight line. I'm just going to make that brush a little bit smaller. So I'm going to take a sample from here. And I'm going to, because you get this preview, I can line up where this, uh, where I'm going to start paint and make sure that the line of the pavement is correct. So I'll just paint in there. And I'm keeping the brush down and I'm just painting. Now I'm going to tackle these bits. So we've got a, it's not a straight line, but there's a transition between the bricks and the stone. So I'm going to take a sample from about here, right in the transition area. Come along to here, just line it up a little bit and paint down the way. And I'll now be able to paint out to there as well. Go too far, control and Z will undo it. Just take your sample again. And that's one of the things, don't do big areas when you've got small brush. And here there's shadow and light, so I'm taking a sample right in the sort of boundary between the shadow and light. Line it up and I can paint into the light for this bit, keep the mouse down, and then I'm painting into the shadow for that bit. And you see it's, it's kind of matched. I can see a line going through there, so I'm just going to get rid of that. And now we're coming up to this bit, and we've got a solid line here, so we'll take a slight copy of the solid line, go up, go up, go up, go up, go up, line it up and paint in, don't worry about that bit there because I can fix that. The, the, the important part there was to get that solid line, um, now we've done that, that's a harder bit, so we'll come along, take a, this has been our guide, take a sample for the dark side, come along, line it up again and we'll just paint down and into here. Um, we've got a wee pattern there. If you see anything that repeats, just get rid of it. And along here and we'll just paint down to here. So that's that and then we'll take a sample from up here. Again, line it up. And it's just a very small bit there and then we've got you going even further. So I can make the brush smaller. We'll sample from here. And we'll sample from here, and we'll just paint it into there. And we're just going to keep going up with this and see what it takes us. That's not bad. Again, we'll sample from here into here, here and here. Take this top corner of that brick as our line up to here. Make a sample for this side, don't have to be for that outside all the time. And we'll go up to here, get rid of this little bit of pattern here. And our next big bit is up here. There's still a leg down there to get tackled, but we'll get that in a moment. And now I'm just going to work my way along this line in the brick. Might be just about far enough. Sometimes you need to go. And again, I'm just using that line as a as a guide. It's not kind of entirely necessary because the brickwork is so old. It doesn't, you know, you're not having. To, and when you get to the edges, take a sample from here. Uh, and we're guessing where that lines up, but it's reasonably good guess. And you get to the edges, slow right down, and your your options are keep your brush fairly small. You'll have a nice hard line at the end of it, um, at the edge of it. 
if you create your brush big it tends to be a softer line I don't know if that's a bit of that green there or not but there you go and that's almost away still got this one leg to get rid of and again we'll just take a sample from this line here and we'll just paint up and out and there you go that's a quick video on how to get rid of something from your image in Photoshop that's a trick keep your your straight lines as your guides either your horizontal or vertical your horizontal or vertical lines they're they're what you want for your your guides and there you go that's it away and if we click on this layer here now you'll see there's a sign and that's away and that didn't take very long so hope that helps um the other tools that we could have used would have been the patch tool or um possibly content aware fill and parts of it but clone stamp tool does the trick every time thanks for watching bye